What's up, guys? Um, should I go? Touch my nose. He's picking his nose already. Um, so today was a really quiet Saturday. Really quiet Saturday, but we had some customers come in and drop some dollars. Um, so it was a productive Saturday, um, but quiet. Quiet. Um, so a couple things that transpired today and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I had a call and actually provoked a video topic that I had here on the channel and I was basically asking you guys what does your local fish store do when people are basically trying to offload um, fish and I got this call and they came like they basically said that they're going to be here at this time they know that I said this price for these fish um, even though I'm not really in a position to be taking fish um, I think I'm being overcautious when I say that because I'm I'm fairly confident you know I, I got diatoms starting to show up on the substrate of the fish holding system that's usually a really good indication that the tank is cycled and this is that ugly stage right it happens in every tank um, especially if you don't have any type of silicate removing media in the system or sponges um, but yeah basically if you don't have like uh, chemi pure blue in your system and you're starting a new tank this is what you're going to get especially if you have the dry rock in there so um, but when that happens that's usually like we're cycled we're ready to go obviously you always want to go by what your test kits are telling you which I have no ammonia, I have very little, very, very little NO2, and I'd be willing to expect next couple of days that that's gone. You know, and we only have, I don't know what just happened there, puberty, um, and then we only have the NO3. But this individual was very forthcoming, and it was the first time that I ever had that question asked, and they told me I have this fish and this fish, and what would you be willing to give those give me for those fish. So they called this morning, said they're gonna be here at this time, which we had a really good morning. Uh, there was quite a few people in and out. A lot of people kind of, you know, again, stopping by, saying hi, introducing themselves, which I, I appreciate and I think is awesome. Two o'clock comes around, I think it might've been a little bit later, and this young man walks up to the door and he's got a Tupperware container with a tang in it and he comes in, he sets the Tupperware container down, and then hands me a Ziploc baggie that has a Midnight Clown in it. Now, prior to them actually showing up, I went and looked at what i pay if I was going to go to my vendor, pay for those fish. And I was ready, and I'm, if you're watching this, I appreciate you. Don't think that I don't appreciate you. Um, and I was ready for an argument, to be completely honest with you. And I know that that's not cus the customer is always right, but hey, this is this is Jeff's shop, so Jeff is going to be Jeff, just part of it. And this young man comes in with a container and a Ziploc baggie of fish, and I'm like, could it have been anybody else? Could it have been? anybody else um he's about 15 years of age and he's downsizing he's downsizing because um, he has a lot of hobbies and he is um, trying to get a freshwater discus um, tank going and i was you know for the most part um pretty impressed by this young man so the original agreement that we had, um, I gave him two options. He took uh, B, option B, but the outcome of it was that I have adopted a hippo tang and a midnight black clown. And they are in the frag system. They're not in this frag system. Uh, they're in the one on the other side. Now. What I have before me is a pretty good looking 
midnight clown. Very big, about three and a half inches. Um, looks like he's pretty healthy for the most part. Did a pretty long acclimation with him. And then I'm not gonna bother her, but we have a tang that is probably one of the most beat up tangs that I have ever seen. Now, the young man uh, explained to me that it was an adoption fish. Um, he had gotten it from Petco, and the fish basically had got dropped off at Petco. Um, what I'm gathering from folks that come in, they talk about you know the, how what Petco 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 Petco's rules are, is that they um, will take fish in, they'll take your system, I get like the whole thing, and you just don't get anything in return, which they probably. Um, I've been told that they quarantine the fish and then put them out for sale. This tang is shredded. Its tail is shredded. Its dorsal fin is shredded. She is very fat. She is, uh, she looks healthy, but she's incredibly timid. Um, probably one of the most gentle fish I think I have seen in a very long time. And I'm assuming, you know, that she's probably, you know, gentle in her nature. Um, and that kind of just, you know, is the reason why she, she got shredded like the way she did. Um, but she's very, uh, very fat. She also has a head and lateral line erosion, which I am no uh, stranger uh, to healing fish from that. And really, uh, the best way, you know, if you have a tang that is showing signs of head, or head and lateral line erosion, is to make sure you're not using any carbon, because uh, there has been a whole bunch of, uh, it's not studies, but there's a lot of connections that have been made between head and lateral line erosion and carbon. Usually it's the carbon that um, you have to rinse for five years for it to stop, you know, just putting out the black stuff so your water is clear um, but this system right now I do have carbon in it and I'm gonna keep an eye on her and see how she's doing if I feel like it's causing a stress I'll pull it out um, but another aspect of healing the fish is one feeding it like keeping it very very happy and feeding her as much as she needs to be fed or the fish um, I don't even know if it's a female but um, I think what we're gonna do is, you know, if she is gonna be here for a little while, we're gonna use her as a teaching tool for folks um, and not doing research with their fish prior to purchasing. Not that the young man, um, you know, causes damage to the fish. Uh, I would assume the person that had dropped the fish off at Petco and he which adopted later um, probably had a very large tank, had a bunch of tangs in it, and you know was sorry about whatever, and was like I, I don't want this fish anymore, or whatever the circumstances may be. But I, at some point, somebody had this fish, and it got tore up, and I'd be willing to bet, I'd be willing to bet that it was another tang that did it that was very similar in species, and this person didn't do their research prior to adding all their fish and then just got this fish slaughtered. And only by her will has lived to this point where she's a very large tang. And um, you know, obviously in pretty rough shape. So we'll probably get some miracle mud in here uh, and I'll run that in the system, see if I can try to get her to heal up. Um, that's that's one of the best ways to you know really promote the health of your fish is running miracle mud and not a lot of folks know that but it's a really really good way the one thing about miracle mud is that it does it does dirty up the sump a little bit so that's something to uh, take into consideration so um, but we're gonna see what we can do with her and she's in the coral tank right now I put in oh, almost dropped you guys I put in one of those baskets that I had on the end I put it on its side and then put a piece of live rock in there because what she was doing was she was getting up on this this um, tray that I've built which she can barely swim around she can barely you know keep her dorsal fin underwater when she's up on this tray 
and then she wiggled her way underneath this uh, tray. What I had to do literally was lift one tray out of the water and she went to the other one and then I dropped that tray down to the bottom and then she went under there and then lifted that tray and then she went into this where we're just going to leave her alone and see how she acts. I did put a little bit of nori up on this end. I probably will move that down here or I'll, I might pull it for tonight. Oh, look, she's moving around a little bit. Um, we might pull it tonight. She doesn't look like she's hungry at all. But um, got some nori in there. Yeah, and I put in her buddy in the tank, see if that you know encourages encourages her to come out. Um, but yeah, that's basically our adoption fish uh, for the time being, and hopefully she does all right. She's moving around a little bit. Kind of see her. Well, I don't know. You guys aren't even picking that up, but she's kind of towards the top right now. I don't want to bug her too much. So like right now she's like nose down. She swims fine, but her fins are absolutely just tore right up. But folks, that, that's the importance of making sure that you do your research of the fish that you are purchasing that you're going to bring home and put in your tank because you don't know what fish work together. And if you're going to have multiple tangs in a tank, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of magic. Um, I think Mile High Reefer uh, has done a pretty good job of documenting how he has gone about adding multiple tangs to one system. Um, and he, he's got a little bit of a thought process behind it and how he makes it work. And you know, the thing is, is if you try that and it doesn't work, you need to be able to get that fish out of there and put it in a situation where it's not gonna get tore up because um, I was pretty bummed out when I saw that fish, I was pretty bummed out when the young man came in and I wasn't just like able to like, eh, I'm all set. Um, you know, I didn't want to discourage a young reefer um, of the age of 15 years. So um, we did a little bit of charity work today um, and that's actually what we're gonna name the tank. We're gonna name her Charity and hopefully we can use her as a learning tool uh, for folks here. Unless somebody wants to adopt her, um, which I probably, um, as long as it was a situation I know that she would be good in and not have to worry about, you know, getting beat up by anybody, where she's probably the big dog in the tank. Um, that's probably, you know, the only circumstance that I would allow that fish to go. But guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow right here for One Take Sunday. Peace.